Mr. Speaker, so I early uh, in uh, the earlier sitting, uh, the Honorable Leader of Opposition had uh, mentioned that uh, he'd like to uh, get a report for our, regarding the seeds for delegation that had gone. Uh, and just for information, uh, Honorable Speaker, so I uh, had led that uh, delegation and had uh, already submitted my report uh, via cabinet. But uh, I also acknowledge that I also have a duty uh, to do that here in this August House. And I uh, apologize for that. And uh, this is the report now, uh, your Mr. Speaker. Sir. I, I thank the Leader for the Opposition uh, for raising this point and the opportunity to inform this August House of the outcomes of the fourth conference of the small island developing states SIDS held from 27th to 30th May in St. John's, Antigua, and Barbuda. The unique uh, vulnerabilities and challenges of SIDS or small island developing states were first recognized by the international community in 1992 at the Rio Earth Summit. Since then, three major conferences in Barbados, 1994, Mauritius, 2005, and Samoa, 2014, have progressively shaped our collective agenda to address these specific challenges. And building on the shared narratives established during these foundational conferences, the fourth conference in Antigua and Barbuda advanced our efforts to accelerate sustainable development outcomes for SIDS. It also identified shared priorities for achieving resilient, equitable, and sustainable growth pathways for our small island nations. At the outset, I wish to acknowledge the Honorable Prime Minister's leadership in entrusting me with the responsibility of leading Fiji's delegation to the fourth SEEDS conference. Mr. Speaker, sir, SEEDS is recognized as a distinct group of developing countries facing specific social, economic, and environmental vulnerabilities at the 1992 United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. SEEDS grouping comprises 39 UN member states from three geographical regions, the Caribbean, the Pacific, and the Atlantic Indian Ocean and South China Sea. Our challenges are well known, stemming from our small size, remoteness and geographic dispersion and scattered populations and its effect on our economies and development. SEEDS requires better support to enhance resilience to exogenous shocks such as market fluctuations, climate, uh, climatic extremes, and frequent and intense disasters. And despite being the lowest emitters of greenhouse gases, more than 40% of SEEDS have a debt to GDP ratio above 40%, with some exceeding 100%. At some stage, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, Fiji was uh, in this group of nations, and due to the hard work of uh, this side of the House and the, the Honorable Minister of Finance, that has been reduced to uh, almost 70 percent at the moment. Our borrowing from global financial institutions is often at non-concessional rates. Between 2017 and 2021, no more than 1.55 percent of to total global official development assistance, or ODA, was allocated to SEEDS. Mr. Speaker, sir, the fourth SEEDS conference, themed Charting the Course Towards Resilient Prosperity, brought together over 3,000 delegates, including 22 heads of government, uh, states and government, highlighting the critical importance of unity and cooperation among SEEDS in addressing shared challenges such as climate change, debt sustainability, and economic vulnerability. Fiji was represented by, by myself as the head of the delegation, supported by permanent representatives to the United Nations and the High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, the Permanent Secretary for Environment and Climate Change, the Director of National Disaster Management Office, the Director of Multilateral Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and key ministry officials. <coughs> Their participation in the general debate, side events, and bilateral meetings highlighted Fiji's commitment to the SEEDS agenda and our leadership in the global discourse on sustainable development. 
The Fiji delegation co-hosted and participated in 11 side events on a range of issues, including early warning systems, marine biodiversity protection, SDG localization, enhancing the digital economy, and leveraging data and technology to improve planning and decision making. On key decisions and outcomes, Mr. Speaker, sir, the SEED's uh, global agenda has been shaped by the programs of action adopted at previous SEED's conferences. The 1994 Barbados uh, Program of Action, the second one is the 2005 Mauritius st uh, Strategy, and 2014 the Samoa Pathway. The fourth SEED's conference in Antigua and Barbuda <coughs> builds upon this legacy with the adoption of the Antigua and Barbuda Agenda for Seeds, um, shortened ABAS, a renewed declaration for resilient prosperity. ABAS outlines the sustainable development aspirations of seeds over the next 10 years and calls for international support to strengthen health systems, build strong institutions, achieve gender equality, and empower youth. It also seeks support for conserving, restoring, and sustainably using oceans, marine resources, and biodiversity while facilitating easier access to affordable and concessional finance. ABAS identifies priority areas for SIDS, including building economic resilience, scaling up uh, climatic, uh, climate and biodiversity action and support, conserving and sustainably using ocean resources mainstreaming disaster risks, health, data and statistics, science and technology, populations and partnerships. Partnerships are the cornerstone for implementing this agenda, Mr. Speaker, sir, requiring strategic collaboration with multilateral and bilateral de development partners and through South-South and Triangular Cooperation. Numerous initiatives were launched at the fourth SEEDS conference, including a center of excellence, for SIDS and a debt sustainability support service both to be based in Antigua and Barbuda. Multilateral and bilateral development partners also announced commitments such as scaling up international climate finance and mobilizing public and private investments for SIDS. Throughout the conference, significant discussions were held on revitalizing SIDS economies for accelerated sustainable growth, enhancing financing and uh, aid effectiveness leveraging digital technologies, making climate finance work for SEEDS, and investing in human capital. The adoption of the Antigua and Barbuda Agenda for SEEDS, a renewed declaration for resilient prosperity, was welcomed as a robust outcome, encapsulating commitments across critical areas such as climate action, debt sustainability, uh, digital transformation, and human capital in, uh, development. Importantly, it seeks to usher in a new area of development for SEEDS, focused on securing more equitable approaches and a better fit for purpose modalities for donor support. <coughs> the consensus established at SEEDS 4, Mr. Speaker, sir, on key financing priorities and reforms required <coughs> from the global uh, community and existing financing architecture sets uh, a strong basis for SEEDS positions at the upcoming summit of the future in New York. Uh, I think we are referring to the past now. It's, uh, uh, that set a strong basis for its position at the, uh, at the summit of the future in New York in September last month. A key element emphasized by all seeds was the value of the multidimensional vulnerability and index, a methodology designed to provide a more comprehensive picture of national contexts and without a robust means to assess national circumstances beyond GDP alone, SEEDS will continue to face challenges in accessing finance, managing debt levels, and stimulating private sector investment. Concessional financing for SEEDS is essential to building structural resilience, growing sustainable economies, protecting diversity, and advancing a sustainable and productive ocean-based economy. The conference saw the launch of several specific new initiatives, including the Center of Excellence for SEEDS and the SEEDS Debt Sustainability Service Initiative aimed at addressing unsustainable debt burdens faced by many small islands. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is crucial to emphasize that the priorities outlined in ABAS 
align with our national development plans and the region's 2050 strategy for a blue Pacific continent. Integrating SEED's priorities into our policies and plans is imperative to achieving coherent and comprehensive progress towards sustainable development agenda. A bus has been adopted by the UN General Assembly in July, in, and uh, the Summit of the Future offers uh, world leaders another chance to forge a global consensus and support for the Antigua and Barbuda agenda for SEEDS. I acknowledge the Fiji delegation who actively participated in the conference sessions, including at the general debate, the interactive dialogues, the high-level events convened by the UN Secretary General, more than 20 technical side events, and more than 10 bilateral meetings. The UN Secretary General had warned that we are conf uh, confronting a climate crisis with the speed and urgency of a Formula One car, but we are responding with outdated and inadequate tools. The government cannot tackle this challenge alone. We need the entire society to unite in developing innovative solutions to strengthen our resilience. And despite being the lowest greenhouse gas emitters, we face the most severe climate impacts. We must demand debt reduction and cancellation and ensure easy access to climate financing. Investing in green and resilient infrastructure is essential for our survival and sustainable future. Now is the time to be bold, take decisive action, and lead the way for our action and our planet. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir, for the opportunity.